Hi there, I'm Frederick Van Johnson. I have the distinct privilege of sitting here on set with Mr. Jeff Berlin, who I met, geez, we met uh, back at Imaging USA, right? Yeah, in Phoenix. Yeah. yeah. So Jeff is a director, a DP, a cinematographer. He's an image maker. He's one of those people that takes whatever tools that are available and does cool things with them, right? So that's what I want to talk about, Jeff. Yeah. So, so I know you and I were talking before on the phone, and you were telling me that you have like you're one of those photographers that you're not obsessed with gear, you're obsessed with the vision, right? And That's the correct. things that you can make with that. Tell me about that. Like, tell me about your process. I mean, for me, I, I love having the tools to realize the creative vision that, that I'm trying to realize. Yeah. And so whether I'm in the studio shooting fashion or beauty or a celebrity portrait or I'm in the air shooting an airplane from one to the other in close formation yeah. or I'm at the rodeo running around with a little rangefinder style camera, yeah. um, I, I always try to find the right tool to realize the image that I'm looking for, that I'm setting that, out to achieve. That resonated with me yesterday, you and I were talking, and just that, that flip of mindset from, okay, you know, people, advanced amateurs and amateur photographers think, okay, I see a Jeff Berlin out there, let me see what he shoots with. Oh, he shoots with that? I have to go get that camera because mm -hmm. I want to be like Jeff Berlin, which is not the right case, right? You're, you, your mindset is more of, pick the right weapon for the job. Right? Oh yeah, totally, totally. I mean, for me, I, the creative vision is really what comes first and foremost. Mm -hmm. What am I setting out to do? Mm -hmm. And then I will, from my arsenal, mm -hmm. or lack thereof sometimes, I will choose what I, what I feel is the right, um, the right tool yeah. to, to try to, to, like I said, to achieve the look that I'm, that I'm going for. It's like the A-team getting suited up for a sure. mission, right? Sure, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I set out, like, what's my mission today? Yeah. What am I trying to achieve? What do I need to achieve that? Mm -hmm. And that's essentially, so I'll go into my cabin, I'll be like, okay, I, if I'm, I'm at the rodeo, I'm going to be taking pictures of people who aren't always used to being in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use a range style, a, sm a range finder style camera, mm -hmm. a smaller camera with a smaller footprint that's less intimidating, it's less obtrusive. Mm -hmm. So when I'm running around and saying, hey, I think you look amazing, I wanna take your photo, let's find a place, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, okay, no problem. And then you know, I'm shooting them with this little camera and it doesn't, it's not like, it's not intimidating to them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and if, if, if I'm doing a larger project, you know, I'm more mindful also of, of you know, having clients on set and what they might be looking for. And so it really varies for the project. Is it, is, is, when you have clients on set, is there a bit of theater in there in that, hey, I know I can capture this with, say, an A7 or A7R, yeah. but I better bring out my A99 because they need to see massive guns or else they won't, you know, they'll so, put the decimal point over on my check. Years ago, before digital, I, when I lived in Paris, mm -hmm. I used to shoot a lot of large format, 4x5 beauty. Yeah. So I had a big Cinar 4x5 camera, 300 millimeter Schneider lens on the front of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I would carry that around Paris, go to the studio, and I was shooting for clients like L'Oreal and Estee Lauder and clients like that. Yeah. And I had my agent in Paris, and, and I remember on one specific job for L'Oreal, it was just the, one of the big bosses was there, and there was definitely a little bit of theater going on. You know, I had the big camera and we had the big, I used to shoot a, also at that point, I was shooting a lot with big HMI lights, 4K, 6K, oh, 12K, yeah, lights, yeah. daylight balanced yeah. lights. Yeah. And um, there, 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 I, had, I, I even remember having a conversation with my agent saying, there's a lot of theater going on here. You know, I had three assistants. I was going to say, you, with all that gear, you probably had to have at least one assistant with a clipboard standing there or waiting, right? Oh, I had, I had an assistant always at my lens. Yeah. I had an assistant behind me, with, next to me, yeah. handing me backs to change backs sure. in the camera. Sure. Or film holders, we should say. Yeah. And then I had another one uh, loading. Mm -hmm. And then I had, and sometimes I had a fourth just kind of hovering if something needed tweaking. Wow. I mean, it, so, and, and there needed to be a certain production level yeah. because the clients, of, especially clients like that, they expected a show. Right. That's interesting, the, the, the theater. So then how does that, not to, I want to I get back to your work a little bit, but how does 
putting on theater or a show like that affect you creatively? I mean, does it inhibit you? You're like, okay, I got to think about what they're thinking about. Then I got to think about what my model's thinking, and I got to get the shot. And does- ultimately, I think ultimately, I'm always really focusing on what I have to achieve that day. Yeah. What am I setting out for? I have a shot list, and I might have pre-lit and have diagrams, and I go in, and everything is just so. Mm-hmm. You know, I have my inspiration, and everything is just so. You know, I'll confer with my agent. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the time, my agent is there to, to play block of the client, so to speak, to allow me to do my thing. I mean, the best clients were the ones that always left me alone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what was great, in fact, on, on, on that L'Oreal job in Paris was once, you know, things got in the groove, they, she, the, 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 the client from L'Oreal and my agent left the studio mm. and I was just there to work and Trust. do what I had to yeah. do. Yeah. So that, that's an ideal situation. It's not always like that, but um, you know, I'm really just always ultimately surrounding myself with my team mm-hmm. and collaborating with my team to achieve what I need to. That's interesting. That's, and that's, a, that's one of the big differences between you know, the, adva- the amateurs and advanced amateurs and professionals. Advanced amateurs and amateur photographers tend to be solo operations, or I can do it all myself. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't need anybody. The more when I talk to pros, it's it's the exact opposite. They surround themselves with other people to help uh, them get the job done. I love having a team mm-hmm. from you know a producer. You just want people to boss around. That's all. I, you know, you know, it's funny. It's funny because there there are times where I would catch a lot of grief because ultimately the buck stops with me. Sure. And on certain hair jobs, if I didn't like how the hair was done, I would tell the hairstylist, I'm like, I remember this one specific instance. I said, you know, we got to start, scr- start from scratch. You got to wash your hair and start over. Mm-hmm. And it, it caused a little bit of tension. And I never liked being that guy to say, you know, we got to start over. I'm sorry, I can't shoot this. It's not working. Mm-hmm. But also I have to do ultimately what's best for, I'm, I'm there for a reason. I'm hired for my sensibility. Right. That's what I'm it's bringing. It's your brand on the line, ultimately. It's, it's my name. Right, right. You know, you're only as good, they say, as your most recent job. Right, right. So, um, but I love, to, to get back to collaboration, mm-hmm. I, I love having a team that I can trust to collaborate with. Mm-hmm. Um, for a lot of jobs that I've done, I have a producer that I've worked with, mm-hmm. and we, it's a creative collaboration with him, coming up with the concept, what are we going to do, and, and then, you know, just picking the right hair, makeup, styling, yeah. and it's just this big team. So let, let's talk about, so that's the outside. Let's talk about gear, yeah. right? And what's the, the, your gear choices and why. Sure. All right, so I know you have, you run the gamut. I think I saw a photo of, we'll overlay that photo, I think, because you showed it to me last mm-hmm. night, right? Of this, like, array. Oh, right, 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 yeah. <laughs> this array yeah. of stuff it's that just you the have. gamut. To, I think it went off into the horizon. So yeah. tell, me, tell me about what you have and why. You know, I feel really lucky to be able to collaborate with Sony and have some uh, access to Sony cameras like the everything from the action cam to the F55. Yeah. You know, I'm really, I, I'm so grateful to be able to to really pick the tool that is the perfect tool for what I'm setting out to do. Yeah. Whether I'm sticking a, a, a little action cam, bolting it under the wing of an airplane, uh, or onto the wing of an aerobatic airplane mm-hmm. to get you know, some great POV shots during an air show routine, yeah. to going out and DPing my first independent feature film with the F55 and shooting that in 4K raw. Yeah. You know, and then everything in between. Yeah. You know, from the action cam up to the, my, I love my NEX6, for example. That's a camera that I, I have it in my bag right, yeah. right, right over there. Yeah. To my A7s, which are, you know, my favorite new cameras, the A7, A7R. And I'm really interested in this new yes. A7S that was just in, right. introduced. Right. But I love my A77. Mm-hmm. And then, but I love my A99s. Is it? Is you know, it? so it really, and, and it, it's... And I, I actually, I have a rhyme and reason for what I'm going to pick. Am I yeah. going to pick my A7 or my A99 or my A77 or my NEX6 or, you know, like mm-hmm. even just the other day, I, tr- I took my new, my, my flash, my big flash unit, I put on my NEX6 mm-hmm. and I did a picture of a model with that. Nice. And it was just a different combination. I love mixing and matching too. Yeah, so. yeah it's, it's interesting because it's, uh, it, it, the analogy kind of reminds me of maybe like a chef. 
mm-hmm. right, with with the block of the knives and right, 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 right. You pick the right knife for the right thing. Right? It's, it's exactly in, that. But all your knives are sharp, right? Right. Well, you remember last night we were talking, and I said it's you know it's it's how a pilot approaches buying an airplane, yeah, or flying an airplane. So as a pilot, if I were in the market to buy an airplane, you know, you, I would look. I, I love these cool little single and two seat aerobatic airplanes Mm -hmm. that you can fly upside down all day and do loops and spins and all that stuff. Those are fun. But then I love, you know, Gulf Streams. For $40 million, I can fly from LA to Paris, Mm -hmm. nonstop. Right. But what's the kind of flight that I take most often? You know, I'll fly from LA to Vegas for lunch or LA to San Francisco, it's regional Mm -hmm. travel. Mm -hmm. Do you do that? So if you do that, you pick a small four seat propeller airplane. If you fly a lot from New York to LA, you're going to pick an airplane that is that, you know, right for that kind of mission. So a, as a pilot, I, you know, you choose an airplane for the mission that you fly the most. Mm-hmm. As a photographer, I choose a camera for the mission that I'm on that day. Yeah. Is that how you answer the question when people come to you and say, you're a professional photographer, which camera should I buy? Right? How do you respond to that? You know, my first question to them is, what do you shoot most often? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that's, that's really the camera that you should have, is the camera that's most appropriate for the work you do. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about uh, 4K a little bit. I okay. Know you just, we have an article up here that you wrote that's just recently been published in, uh, what's the name of this magazine? It's the, it's the Cine Alto magazine. It's the it's most the, recent issue that was yeah. released. Uh, just just in, in this it, show, yeah. So this, the gist of this article is about what something that's near and dear to my heart that I'm really interested in, right. and that's the convergence of motion and still and being able to what I call harvest that motion footage to pull out still photographs it's, successfully. So are we there now? Can it's, we do that? I think we are. I think we are. I, it's, it's a really, really interesting time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's funny because years ago um, when I first got into digital, I, I had a Canon 5D Mark II. Mm-hmm. And I got that camera because of its ability, its convergence of still and motion in one in one camera, sure. and anyway, long story short, you know, I, 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 even back then, I thought you know it would be really cool to pull stills out, but it just the technology wasn't there, the resolution wasn't there, whatever. Mm-hmm. With 4K RAW, um, I was able to. So I, I had this access to the F55. I had a job coming up for a LA-based fashion magazine mm-hmm. called Genlux. And I thought, this is the perfect time and the perfect opportunity to try this thing. Yeah. Because I've heard that this is a thing now, cinephotography, yeah. Yeah. they're calling it. I mean, I don't know if that's the official name. Cinephotography. Cinephotography. Okay. Using a cinema, a cinema camera, a digital cinema camera, to pull, roll, to roll. Mm-hmm. You, 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 um, Pull big files out of it, yep. process them, and then you you know it's so it's like the ultimate motor drive. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the resolutions are there where I'm. Anyway, so I like that the ultimate motor drive, right? So instead of it, it, the cadence, instead of say on a fashion suit, right. shoot, Instead of being click, okay, move, click, okay, move, click, give me more of this, click. You roll and then go direct. But it's, it was, it was interesting because this is, this is one of the shots behind us uh-huh. that is actually, I shot with the F55 in 4K RAW. I set up the digital, this, the camera in the, in the studio on tripod, just like a normal camera that I would shoot with. Yeah. And I, it was different. It was a different process though, working with my model because there's no click. She didn't have the feedback of yeah. the click. That's the other thing, yeah. Training the so models because they was, know to move to the next pose when they hear the click. Right, the click the is everything from, you know, I'm doing well, it's affirmation, he likes what I'm doing, yeah. the, or she, the photographer, likes what, what's going on. Mm-hmm. I did this, and so I was talking, you know, I was working with the, with the girl, saying, okay, you know, we're rolling, and so I, I was, I, I had set the camera, I had, done a, I had done a camera test with a model a, a week before, mm-hmm. And I figured, because I, I didn't want any motion blur, I wanted just enough where a little bit of hair movement might come. Sure. But with, with the girl, I didn't want her to blur so much. Mm-hmm. But I, I didn't want to shoot at a higher frame rate than 24. Mm-hmm. So I, I worked it out to where, with this camera, I, I use a shutter angle as opposed to a shutter speed. Hmm. So with Explain a t- that, explain that. 
So 24 frames per second uh, in your A99, for example, when you go to shoot motion, mm -hmm. you would set your shutter speed to 50. Mm -hmm. So standard, you know, for cinema cameras, they use a shutter angle because of the, back in the old days, and some of the cameras still now, like even the F65, they have a physical shutter that spins. Mm -hmm. And you know, the film is pulled through the camera, the shutter opens up for half the time it's there, or for whatever fraction of the time that the shutter is in the, the film is in the gate, mm -hmm. then it comes down again and it's the whole thing. Yeah. It's how a film camera works. Yep. A motion picture camera. So a, you want to have like that cinematic look with a little bit of motion blur. You want to have uh, the shutter open half the time that the film is in the, 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 the gate, so yep. to speak. Mm -hmm. so, Hence, 24 frames per second, 50th of a second, or 48th of a second. Yeah. That would equate to a 180 degree shutter. So the shutter is open, it's open half the time and closed half the time. Yeah. So with this, a 180 degree shutter would give me a little bit more motion blur than I wanted. So 90 degree, that'd be like a hundredth of a second. Mm -hmm. 45 degree, that'd be like a two hundredth of a second. So in the model test that I did, I tested different shutter speeds, and f uh, or shutter angles rather, mm -hmm. and a 45, so I went with a 45 degree shutter to give me a two, the equivalent of a 200th of a second, okay. which was just enough to keep her sharp, but give me a little bit of motion when I wanted it. That's cool, that's cool. So, uh, but that's getting very. No, that's awesome, yeah, that's yeah. what people wanna hear. You yeah. know, they wanna dive into the weeds on that stuff. Um, so with this kind of photography though, like we were talking about before, the traditional, model portraiture type things yeah. flash, right? Correct. Now we're continuous lights. Well, well, I've been continuous light throughout my whole career. Mm -hmm. I've, I've always loved the quality that I get with continuous light sources, yeah. especially HMIs. Yeah. Although everything is going you know, LED, LED now, and it's yeah. really interesting what you can do with LEDs. But you know, throughout my career, HMIs have been such a go-to light for the effects that I want to get. Yeah. Because also I've shot a lot of beauty, a lot of hair. And you can get shines and textures that, that are really harder to achieve than uh, with strobe. That's cool. As with HMI. What about? But, uh, but this was obviously con a continuous light. Continuous source. lights, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so speaking of continuous lights and you know, like managing the shutter speed to freeze motion, the new A7S that was just released. The S stands for sensitivity. Sure. And some crazy fast ISO. Unbelievable. It's like 400,000 something. Is that even possible? I mean, I, it's like I, seeing things before it actually happens. I, <laughs> right, right. So will I mean, that, how will that change your photography, having access to that, that latitude of exposure? You know, as a still photographer, I don't often shoot in low light. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, as a still photographer, I, 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 I love the idea of having very clean files in a lower light, but I don't often shoot in low light per se. Got it. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shooting motion though, like when we were doing this, this movie that I shot with the F55, one of the things that was so fantastic for me about the F55 was its low light capabilities. Because mm -hmm. it's, tw it's, it's native ISO for, for that camera was 1200 wow. exposure index. Native ISO. Right. So almost digital, it's almost locked still when, when you're shooting same. when you're shooting 4K raw. It's yeah. locked at 1200 exposure index. Okay. So that was great because we were shooting that film pretty much sunset to sunrise. So we were on an overnight schedule. So there was a lot of low light. And what I really loved about being able to shoot with a, a camera with terrific low light sensibilities, motion, was being able to not have to overlight. A situation to be able to use a lot of practical lighting mm -hmm. and to take light away even yeah That's to, interesting. Yeah. so yeah so now a scene will be more true to life right because it's more true it? to life and I mean there was a scene in this movie and I mentioned this to you last night very quickly mm -hmm. where um, we lit it was a very small tight area that we were shooting in yeah. and we lit it with a flashlight and two iPhone That's screens insane. Yeah. and the camera had enough low light sensibility that we pulled a terrific image again from, and it wasn't a big flashlight, yeah. a little flashlight and two iPhone screens on glow, set to glowing. Yeah. Yeah. And that was all the light we had and it was all we needed. 
So, so let's talk about that movie because you, you mentioned that movie uh, yeah. and, and shooting it with the F fifty five. What what's the process for for like I guess to dive into it? I know it's a complex sort of array of people and equipment and gear and scheduling and location and all that. But when it comes down to it on a day to day basis, you show up again. You're the fall guy, right? You're you're the guy in charge. You show up. What does it look like? What's a day for you when you're shooting a feature film or a film like that? Well, firstly, I didn't want to roll out of bed after having a <laughs> eight-hour turnaround, and yeah. I wanted to sleep another three hours. Yeah. But um, no, it was it was, you know, it's funny. It was a grueling, excruciating drudgery of an experience, but it was wonderful. Yeah. You know, it was it was such hard work, and the hours were long, and I was also the camera operator, so nothing happened until I was ready to shoot. Yeah. So it was it was there was a lot of work. It was really exhausting. You know, we would go over the schedule, we'd go over the shot list, we we would plan. You know, all right, this is everything where we're going to be, and I'd start thinking about light and what we were going to need, and and you know, I confer with the director and we'd go over you know camera angles mm -hmm. and different shots we wanted and you know let's do it from this angle let's do it from that angle and then when we got on set you know again it was just always conferring with the director you know I was always by his side or we were always just constantly within earshot of each other it was like okay here we are here we are here we are here we are yeah. you know yeah and it was just on and on and on I mean it's day after day after day are you gonna do another but one? it's wonderful I mean it's funny we did I remember we did our last shot I shut the camera down and, you know, I, it was a very wistful moment because, you know, over weeks of working with these people, you bond with them, you become family. Yeah. And, you know, in some ways, it, you know, the few days before the end, you can't wait for it to end. Right. Then you finish the last shot and you're sorry that it's over. Wow. You know. It, it's, the whole process sounds a lot like what I hear women describe childbirth as. <laughs> I like to, you know, it's funny because when I'm shooting, and especially when I'm shooting something really exacting like beauty, and I'm like, don't move, don't move. It's always very, you know, very specific, very precise. Sometimes I feel like a dentist. We're almost done. We're almost there. We almost got it. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like I'm pulling a tooth or doing a root canal. Yeah. Well, Jeff, this has been a, a, an awesome interview. What's what's next for you? What's uh, what's on your plate? You know, I this whole transition from being a still photographer to shooting motion has been very organic for me. It wasn't really something I I had in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Um. But like even even in the past few years, I worked on a couple feature films that were directed and DP'd by friends of mine, mm -hmm. but with major actors like Helen Hunt and Samantha Morton, and Aaron Paul and yeah. Maggie Grace, and it was a, you know some. I, so I, I really had an insight to some. But even then, I, I, I being a cinematographer was not even really on my radar. Mm -hmm. But I paid attention. Yeah, and. Um, now having been behind the camera and having worked in, on my own projects as director, cinematographer, um, I mean, I, I will always stay true to my roots as a photographer, as a yeah. still photographer, because I love it. But being able to take my images, my sense of this, to, to translate the, my sensibility to a moving image mm -hmm. has really been transformative. Yeah. And, and I, I just want to see where that goes. I, I, I love it. It's a and, lot of fun. And now you have the tools to do that with that arsenal, right? It's, it's, it's amazing. Again, from everything from the A7 and, you know, all these Sony cameras, the A7, the A7R, the A77, the A99. Mm -hmm. And, and now with the A7S going 4K, yeah. I mean, I have the opportunity for stills and motion in just about everything that I pick up, yeah. which is fantastic. That's crazy. So where's your, where's your website? My website is uh, online. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, oh, good. Yeah. That's a good place for it. <laughs> it's uh, berlincreative.com. Okay. And uh, my Instagram and my Twitter are both JT Berlin. Julia Tango, JT Berlin. Perfect. Very smart. Branded. Stamped. I try to be consistent. Except for the website. Except for the website. <laughs> that one came first. Awesome. Well, Jeff, thank you thank for you. coming on. It's yeah, been a pleasure, for sure. pleasure chatting with pleasure you. Pleasure is mine. All right, guys, that's it. Jeff Berlin, make sure you check out his website at... Jeff Berlin Creative. Uh, Berlin Creative. Berlin. Berlin. Maybe you should get Jeff Berlin Creative. Well, have, you know, I should probably, now I'm going to have to get that. Or <laughs> yeah. else somebody's going to squat on it and make me buy it from them. You got to go get it now. Go get your computer. So berlincreative.com. And uh, you've heard it here first. I mean, here's the guy that's using all the Sony gear and picking the right tool for the right job. I'm Frederick Van Johnson. We'll see you in the next interview.